liebe Schüler und Freunde der Dudelsackschule, herzlich willkommen zum 19. Pipegeflüster der Dudelsackschule, Werksführung bei Mekalem Backpipes. Ich bin mega aufgeregt, weil wir sind heute vor Ort bei Mekalem in Kilmarnock, Schottland und zeigen euch heute, wie man den Dudelsack herstellt, wie man Backpipes baut. Ja, unsere Schüler in der Dudelsackschule die benutzen schon seit vielen Jahren McCallum Produkte und spielen auch die Instrumente natürlich. Das ist die McCallum Backpipe, Practice Chanter. Und wir sind sehr zufrieden mit den Produkten. Also wir können absolut sagen, die Qualität und das preis leistungs und auch der Service von McCallum ist unschlagbar. Und deshalb empfehlen wir unseren Schülern auch die Produkte von McCallum. Und damit unsere Schüler und alle anderen Freunde der Dudelsackschule, damit ihr mal seht, wie die Pipes hergestellt werden. Deswegen haben wir uns heute auf den Weg gemacht hierher. Der Ansprechpartner für mekallen produkte im deutschsprachigen Raum ist Kilsen Moor. Und der Inhaber von Kilsen Moor, Donald McPhee, den haben wir einfach mitgenommen, weil wer kann besser erklären, worum das es geht oder die Führung durch das Werk leiten. Ja, wir von der Dudelsackschule sind sehr froh, dass ihr euch unser Video anschaut, dass ihr bei der Führung hier heute dabei seid. Und äh, ja, deshalb äh, gucken wir jetzt mal, wo wir den Donald finden. Und äh, ich habe auch gesehen, dass der Stuart dabei steht und auch der Kenny. Das sind die zwei Chefs von, von McCallum Backpipes und die suchen wir jetzt mal. Achtung! So, wo sind sie denn? Da kommt der Andreas. Hallo zusammen. Hallo. Hello. Sind wir dran? Jetzt seid ihr ah, ja, dran. Wunderbar. Hallo allerseits. <lacht> freut mich sehr. Es freut mich auch sehr, äh, wieder hier in, in Schottland zu sein, vor allen Dingen bei McCallum Bikepipes. Ich will aber nicht lange reden. Ich will euch mal die zwei Herren von McCallum Bikepipes vorstellen. Einmal Kenny McLeod und Stuart McCallum. Und die beiden werden uns durch den Werk führen von äh, McCallum, werden ein bisschen erzählen, auch jetzt am Anfang über die Geschichte von McCallum und dann geht es los äh, durch den Fabrik. Ich werde nicht alles äh, direkt übersetzen. Ich habe sie gebeten, langsam zu sprechen und, äh, und werde dann immer wieder, wenn ich denke, dass es notwendig ist, mal der ein oder andere äh, Sache übersetzen. Und ich werde aber auch Fragen stellen, die ich denke, die interessant sind und anhalten und wieder äh, übersetzen dann für euch. Dann stelle ich mal vor, Kenny McLeod, Stuart McCallum, the floor is yours. Hi everybody, um, just we're looking forward to letting you see everything that we do at McCallum Bagpipes. It should be an interesting tour. Um, uh, we thought it might be quite Uh, interesting as well for you to know how we started and how Stuart and I met and how the company grew. So in 1990 I was the pipe major of the Glasgow Sky Association competing in grade one and a, a very young man called Stuart McCallum came to join the band, gave him his audition and he was a fantastic piper even then and that's how we became very good friends. We used to travel to contests together, both lived in the south side of Scotland. I was going, he was in Kilmarnock. Um, and then I lived in America for a couple of years and I was selling pipes and stuff over there. And I got short to do some repairs at that time. And when I came back in 1998, we thought this is a good opportunity to start a brand new bike pipe maker. And McCallum was always a very famous name in piping. So we called it McCallum Bike Pipes after Stuart. Um, and since then, We've just invested heavily in uh, machinery to make things easier and more efficient to make pipes. Um, I remember the very first time we bought a CNC lathe, which was £5,000. I couldn't sleep for a week thinking about it until I saw Stuart what he could do, and it's um, gone from there. Stuart has really revolutionised the way bagpipes are made because his mind's not clouded by how things are made by bagpipe makers. He looks at the part and thinks of the most efficient way to make it. And that's how it's gone. It's become such a success story because 
it's uh, the easiest way to make it the most efficient and most cost effective. So there's a lot more to tell you which we'll probably talk to you about tomorrow but I'll pass on to Stuart and he'll give you a tour of exactly what we do here. Thank you very much. Okay guys, Fred Donald, do you want to can I, can I just intervene and ask a couple of questions yeah, sure. on that? Because it is of interest for people, you know, the background, how did it all start? I remember, or I'll, I'll speak in German to the, the, the audience, uh, ich kann mich daran erinnern, vor 20 Jahren, it was about 20 years ago, that I met you guys. Yeah. Uh, and I came to McCallum Bagpipes and your family has a, a timber, yes. wood, uh, Holzbetrieb. Is that one of the reasons why you got involved in wood? I had nothing to do with no, the, the wood side all. of the My the father family. just basically helped us to get a little bit of space of his workshop. And we managed to get a couple of lathes in there. So that was okay. back in 1998. And then within a, a few years, we absolutely filled the space we had. And in 2004, we bought the first unit where we're standing just now. Mm -hmm. And then 2011, we bought the unit next door and we've moved in there and filled it. And then just recently in December, 2021, we bought the unit to the other side there, which we're just, uh, we're, we're, we're fitting that out as we speak. And it's yeah. to give us more space and, and get the, the place better organized. And ich werde das ganz kurz mal übersetzen. Also als ich McCallum das erste Mal kennengelernt habe, das war vor 20 Jahren, die sind ungefähr 23 jetzt, äh, Jahre am Start. Und das war ganz hinten, man sieht jetzt gleich diese Hallen, also riesen Hallen hier. Äh, wo angefangen wurde, es war nur ein ganz kleiner äh, Betrieb und äh, Stürz seiner Familie äh, ist im Holzbereich, sind noch da und haben ihm die Möglichkeit gegeben, äh, mit seinen äh, Eltern dort äh, eine Maschine aufzubauen etc. etc. Und von dort ist das Ganze gewachsen. Äh, es sind hier eine, es ist ein Industrial Row, würde ich call it? Yeah. Units uh, und uh, McCallum hat ja, uh, peu à peu über die Jahre sich immer ausgebreitet. Wo Firmen dann zugemacht haben, haben die die Hallen übernommen. Uh, I'll just leave the, uh, the tour up to Stuart now to show you what we're talking about. Sure, you it's know. probably easier just to get through into the factory. Yeah, then we'll just walk yeah. through the factory and we can look at the machines and, yeah. and see how things are made. Es ist natürlich etwas lauter hier drin. Ne? Äh, wir müssen laut reden, wenn nicht ist es laut für die Kamera, für ja. das Mikrofon. Just before we start, es ist normally very busy. Es ist normalerweise sehr, sehr viele Leute hier drin. Es ist äh, aber so, dass die schon nach Hause gegangen sind und es ist ruhiger. Das gibt uns die Möglichkeit, auch mehr zu zeigen auch mit euch mehr zu unterhalten und äh, in, in Ruhe das Ganze machen. Aber normalerweise ist hier richtig Leben drin. Also Sie sehen, normally there's a lot of people in here working away, but they're not here yeah, today. Wir so haben half, half 40 people, that's how many 40 people Personen, 40 Mitarbeiter. This is the raw material. This is the African blackwood. It comes in a 14-piece set. We get it from Tanzania and Mozambique, and it's uh, very, very expensive. Why, why is it 14? Why don't 14 stück? Why 14 pieces? Is that a that's many parts? We get 14 piece set. Right. Okay. It comes, it comes like that, that. There's a, 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 a base stock. Right. So you get everything, including a pipe chanter. Okay. So it's a 14 piece set. So every all your so stocks. So that's, that's how you order it in that. So. Yeah, but you don't buy it lens. It comes in uh, square blocks, and it's all waxed at the end. But it's only the heart of the tree that's actually black, so there's more waste than what there is yield. Okay. Also er sagt, dass die, äh, nur die Hälfte vom Baum ist auch äh, Blackwood. Also der Rest ist quasi Abfall. No? But it's, it's not just bagpipes that we make from African blackwood. No. It's all your oboes, clarinets, yeah. all these other instruments. And music instruments. It's, it makes good uh, musical instruments. So that, that lens, is that, is that all you need? That, that's that's for a bass stock. Okay. Uh, this is a, like a bass long joint. Right, and okay. it's the same, it comes just a longer piece. So the first operation we would do is we just turn it so that it's round. And the only reason we do that there, it just makes it easier to, to grip in all the lathes. Mm -hmm. And as we come around this way, we do three different machines. They're all computerised CNC machines. Mm -hmm. um, 
turn, to turn down the wood and bore up the holes through the middle. As if the the bend and fuzzy, he's a machine in drain than first mal, na, das Holz quasi von eckig auf rund, dass es dann verarbeitet werden kann. Und die gibt's in verschiedenen Längen. Gibt's hier dann die Base Torx und der Hohe gibt's Torx für die Sensor. And is it just these machines here then? Or? Here, here. Okay. And then, so the top of them here, we use these smaller CNC machines to profile. That's in the, uh, hold on a second here. Uh, That's in the CNC uh, machines. And I'm going to explain that the Stuart is uh, a pioneer in the world in the area of Dudelsack Manufacture. He was the first one who then es gewagt hat, Dudelsäcke with CNC machines to fertigen. I just think you are sort of a pioneer in this area. You were the first. We were the first bagpipe maker to get down this street. I mean, a little bit of my background, I wasn't a bagpipe maker. I'm an engineer to trade mm -hmm. in CNC machines. Yeah. It's what I get trained on. And I used to, the company I used to work for used to do subcontract for Rolls Royce. Mm -hmm. But it's the same technology we use, except we're applying to bagpipes rather than to uh, parts for the aero industry. It's the okay. same software and everything. I used to program all the machines. Okay. So we use these smaller CNC machines that you can see here, and we use them to profile the wood. And these machines just really make it so super efficient and, and super accurate. Mm -hmm. This machine fitted up. This is brand new. We've only had this, they call it a cobot, and we've only had it for the last couple of months. What's it called? A, a, a cobot. Cobot. They don't call them robots because they call them a, it's a collaborative robot and it's designed to work along with, with people. Okay. So if that arm was to come round and touch us, it would just stop, so it's very safe. Right. And what it's doing is it's, it's loading components. That's your base stop, that's the piece of wood we're seeing down there. Mm -hmm. So we're building a hole in there. And what the cobot's doing is it's just lifting it from the pallet loading it to the machine and once the, the operation's finished just take it from the machine and just drop it into a bucket. Mm -hmm. It's a very basic operation. Also diese, diese äh, das nennt sich ein Cobot, also kein Robot, äh, weil das ja zusammen mit Menschen äh, harmonieren soll, zusammenarbeiten soll und nicht voll selbstständig. Und die, die nutzen den äh, Cobot, um im Grunde nur das Holz in die Maschine zu füttern und wieder rauszuholen. That's all it does, put it in and take the back out. Yeah, it can do other operations if you program it to do it, but that's just what we're using it for. Okay. And you can use one of these robots to polish if you wanted. You can, once you get the program, it'll just repeat the program all the time. Okay. It's only interesting, no? Yeah, I don't know what you want, it's just about to do the cycle. Okay. We can go to up button and show them what they're smart. Of course, while we're waiting for it to do that, then obviously people will be thinking, hmm, that's another robot taking away someone's work, etc., et you know. But uh, it's, it's not like that. The, the jobs it's doing is a lot of the menial jobs, the, the jobs that the guys don't like, yeah. and it's a dirty, exactly. horrible job, yeah. turning down and boring up the wood. So it's, even safety-wise, it's a much safer way of doing things. Yeah, yeah. But the uh, steward says, einfach, der nimmt hier keine wertvolle Arbeit weg von einem Mensch. Das sind so Arbeiten, die die Menschen nicht machen möchten. Das ist einfach das Maschine füttern und, äh, und die Sachen rein und rausholen. Ne? So sieht er das dann. Ist das ein Broken Ja, ja. So, if you want to go over this way, Robert's got the, one of the CNC machines. Profile in the tenor top. Mm -hmm. 
So once all the parts are profiled, they pass around the corner here. Just a quick uh, thing. So profiling means that you it's all the shaping. Yeah. Right. Okay. And also the the bore. Yeah. Right? As a profile has just the quasi the ganze form becoming and uh, und die Bohrung bekommen. Das ist so der, der Rohzustand dann für den. Und dann werden sie dann weiter verarbeitet. Das zeigt er jetzt gleich. Wenn er noch gepasst von hier über die Bohrung This is Robert and what he's doing is he's doing the color the, the beading and foaming. It's just the decoration. So you can see this part here that's come off the machine and this is what Robert's doing there. And then he'll polish it. And and he's, do, he's doing that by hand. By hand, by hand. That's so, traditional yeah. for bagpipes. Yeah. It doesn't affect the sound in any way but it's just traditional. Ich finde das, äh, find das ganz wichtig, weil äh, gerade in meiner äh, Laufbahn zusammen mit, äh, mit Carlem hört man immer wieder, ah, das sind ja rein nur Maschinen, äh, CNC-Maschinen. Also hier ist auch viel Handarbeit dran. Also das, Pro, äh, das Profiling wird auf CNC gemacht, aber die Arbeit, das Handcrafted-Arbeit, das gibt es immer noch und das wird hier mit dem Combing äh, gemacht. Ne? Also das sind diese Gekämpfe. Das ist alles Handarbeit. Das ist ja noch nicht fertig. Wir haben die Polish Machines hier. Das ist still done by hand. Das ist der Metal Work. Mm -hmm. So we actually machine all the metal work and everything in house. See that as we go on further yeah. on the tour. Also, the metal wird in house gefertigt und uh, und die Polierung ist auch Handarbeit. Das wird hier an an diese Maschinen. Mm -hmm. Und da das is, uh, Aluminium. Yes. Could, could you maybe say a couple of words about that? Because over the years there's been changes, improvements to the bagpipes over the years yeah. that I've uh, known mechanical. I think they introduced the, the aluminium alloy round about 2010-2011 and the reason for that was we used to use brass and then we would nickel plate it but we found the nickel plate would wear off and it would also tarnish mm -hmm. but this is, is it's, it doesn't tarnish and it's not going to wear off or anything yeah. another beauty of it is because we machine it in the factory I don't know if you can see that there, it's all, everything's threaded mm -hmm. So we thread all the parts and then we thread the mating part of the bagpipe so that it, it screws on in place as well. Yeah, yeah. I'll just translate that. So uh, Stuart said, for ungefähr 10 Jahre uh, haben die angefangen Aluminium zu verwenden. Uh, davor haben sie ein Messing gehabt und die wurde beschichtet mit uh, Nickel, Silber, Nickel. Äh, aber es gab ja Probleme, weil die Silbernickel äh, anfällig ist und, äh, und dann sind wir einfach auf die Idee gekommen, Aluminium zu nehmen, weil die auch immer hochpoliert ist, äh, die verfärbt nicht. Und noch dazu haben wir die Möglichkeit, dies mit Gewinde zu versehen. Weil das war ein Problem über die Jahre mit heute immer noch, wo äh, da ist Bewegung in den Blackwood und kann dazu führen, dass die Teile abfallen. Und hier hat man äh, seit zehn Jahren ungefähr die mit Gewinde versehen und halten dann viel stabiler und bleiben immer in Hochglanz. So what we do is we move to the next door. This half of the factory is where all the blackwood parts are all machined and prepared and all the coven's done. Through to the unit we're just going to get through next door here. This is where all the mounts and ferrules, the metal work, 
plastic pipe chanters, practice chanters, all the, all the accessories are all produced. And as you can see, we've got, I think we've got around sort of 20 CNC machines, all doing various different uh, bagpipe accessories, pipe chanters. We even do a full range of uh, plastic pipes now. Mm -hmm. um, and you can see, I mean, these machines are they're not just doing one particular job, that you can download different programs to them, so it can be doing a practice chanter one minute, then it could go into a pipe chanter, just whatever the, the, the demand is. Mm -hmm. Also, hinten waren, äh, war der Blackwood-Bereich und in diesem Bereich hier werden die ganzen Zubehörteilen äh, gefertigt, auch viel Plastik, also Plastikchander, Pipechander etc. This is the plastic pipe chanter, it's already been pre-drilled, so it's loaded into the machine and the machine turns it down and profiles it to the finished shape of the plastic how, how pipe chanter. How long would that take, roughly? That cycles about 15 minutes. Also this uh, is on a pi uh, pipe chander with a machine as you fed again. Uh, that's from this stage here. That stage there, the profile yeah. is about 15 minutes. Ungefähr 15 minutes would it have to go on full, full chander then. And half over here we have another cobot. cobot. Mm -hmm. Loading. This is the very, very early stages of the plastic pipe chanter. The mach all, the mach all the process with this is it's just getting loaded to the machine and it's just facing the first side. Okay. And then once we do that, we take it to the next stage where it will drill the hole. So that's a, that's a conical hole that's been put on the chanter. Correct. Yeah. And of course, the, the beauty with the CNC that it just reproduction always the same. So reliable, yeah, yeah very yeah. consistent. And this is the we use this particular machine for doing the, the metal work. I mean we can use the other machines as well, but the reason we use this machine is we've got this one fitted with this, we call this a magazine bar feed. And basically what it does is we feed in the raw material, so we feed in multiple uh, lengths of the material and the machine will, will run away itself and it just feeds itself. Okay. So you've got a, a parts catcher here that catches the finished components and the swath goes in the bin. I thought it was giving me a, a, an attack here by <laughs> the robot. <laughs> also, der Stuart hat ja eben erklärt, äh, die, Maschine, die Maschinen sind ja flexibel, die können sie auch für Kunststoff nehmen, aber das wird ja für den Metall äh, genommen, weil sie hier so einen Fieder haben, wo sie dann diese Aluhorn einfach on masse da reinmachen können, dann werden sie äh, automatisch eingefüttert. And this is the most important machine here, I think, isn't it? For the snack machine. Yeah. <laughs> You've got to keep the workers happy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> This is our engraving machines. Yeah, again, everything's computerized and automated. And uh, the designs, it's cut with a diamond and it actually scores the metal work. Mm -hmm. But with that, where you get very, very fine detail, as you can see on the yeah, stock yeah. ferrule. How often do you need to change that diamond? It lasts and, uh, for pretty much years, to be honest. Okay. It lasts for a long time. As as is, you have to replace them more if somebody has an accident, more than, than wearing out. Ah, right, okay. Also, they are ja with diamant graviert. I have just asked how long a long held so a diamant. Also, viele, viele Jahre, but er geht was durch den Mensch kaputt, als der diamant kaputt geht. What would, you, what would you pay for a replacement diamond? I mean, it's an industrial diamond, ah, so right, it's, it's okay. about, I think about £100 right. or thereabouts, so they last for years. Machining centers. We use these machines for, we can use them for engraving the, the, what it's doing just now, but we can also use it for drilling the holes in practice chanters and pipe chanters. Okay. Fully automated. You can see all the different drills in the are machine. These, are these backpipe parts or what? That is going to be off a small pipe or a real pipe. Small pipe, real pipe. Oh, that's yeah. the common stock. Mm -hmm. As you know, Donald, we don't just make Highland bagpipes yeah. here, we make a full range of Scottish small pipes, we do folk pipes, and we're also venturing into the Ulan market. So we're doing uh, Ulan pipes, 
the practice sets, half sets, and we've recently been on to the full sets. Right. All produced in house. Everything's produced in house. Okay. These are more CNC machines. These are parts of the Ulin pipes. Also normalerweise würde wahrscheinlich an jeder Maschine jemanden stehen und hier arbeiten. Also wir haben hier etwas ruhig, Ruhe heute. That was your plastic pipe chanter that we seen earlier getting turned. So once it's been turned, we, we, we sand and polish the, the plastic mm -hmm. and then it will get into this machine here and we'll put the holes in there. So how do you sand it and polish it? Do you have a machine for that? Or well, it's it done manually. Manually. With fine, okay. fine, wet and dry sandpaper. Right. And then we use a soft cotton buff to strip the shine. small pipes, there's uh, a big part of the small pipes is the bellows, so yet again we make everything in-house, this is a part of the bellow, so which we'll, we'll see in a few minutes time, we'll actually see a more sort of finished bellows, so the, the wood gets loaded in as a, a square block and it'll end up as, as this. Also bellows sind die für die small pipes, die Blasebahn, ja? uh, die werden auch hier in-house gefertigt, man fängt dann so einen so Holzblock an und endet dann hier also zum Teil. There's more to it than that, obviously. Yeah, we'll see that too. Mm -hmm. This is the main sort of part of the, the bellows. It's made from beech wood. That part where we're looking at getting machined here, that's to do with the, the, the cushion that goes on the side up here. Uh, yeah. So yeah. that's what that's for, in case you're wondering. Mm -hmm. And then this is for Fred Morrison section, if you like, of the workshop. Mm -hmm. It's all the small pipes and real pipes that we make. So that's a bellow when it's finished. Yeah. That's for that little wooden piece we've seen earlier there. Mm -hmm. It goes in below Same there way. and it's to do with the, the, the padding for your elbow. Mm -hmm. Yet again, very proud of the fact that we made everything here is made in house. Okay. We just buy in the leather hides and cut them, glue them. Mm -hmm. It's quite a tedious, it's a handmade job. Yeah. Yeah. But it's the heart of the, the whole instrument, it's the bellows. And you use that bell for all the instruments? It's the you know, same uh, bellow we use on the small pipes as we do the real pipes and the own pipes. Mm -hmm. We actually modelled our small pipe, the bellows, off of building pipes to start with. Because mm -hmm. Fred always spoke about that there because they're a little bit bigger than your average small pipes, but it makes it easier to play them. Okay. So, 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 so the uh, bellows sind ja eigentlich uh, uh, building pipe bellows. Sind etwas größer wie die traditionelle schottische uh, bellows, aber die haben das von Anfang an genommen, auch für die small pipes. Also so sehr sehr hochwertige Bellows, muss man schon sagen. Und werden alle komplett im Haus gefertigt. Und wir haben eine Range of uh, Folk Pipes, ist der, mm -hmm. against the wall, each one of them is a set. Very, very popular. Since yeah. uh, lockdown and Covid, mm -hmm. uh, people stuck in the house and maybe not want to play the, the Full Highland Pipes, maybe for their neighbours. Yeah. It's an ideal lovely practice. practice. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah, lovely. Basically, it's a small pipe, just a different configuration. People who are scared of small pipes, yeah. That's why we did it because people on oh, no, I don't want to play small pipe, but they don't realise that they're just basically miniature highland pipes, but it's mm -hmm. the key of A and they're just over your shoulder small pipes. Yeah. This is from our woolen pipe assembly. To, to see a complete set. Are you making the bags or are you We don't make the bags, we just fit them. Right. Also this here is a Ullen type Fertigung, also Zusammenbau. Was ich sehr lustig finde, ist, dass diese riesen lange, ihr kennt ja diese 
Backpipe Case ne? von, von, äh, von für die Pipes. Das ist eine lange Version davon. Das ist auch ein Alarm, wenn das so das ist. Das ist ein Seisel. Ja. Das finde ich sehr für uns, wenn die anderen da rein So, it's going to take you through to the assembly department and we can actually see where the pipes are all put together mm -hmm. and we can also see some of the finished practice chanters and some of the accessories that we do mm -hmm. just to give you an idea of the amount of components and different parts that we do so we're going to in the Zusammenbau, die Abteilung, wo die Pipes dann alles zusammengebaut und äh, fertig gemacht werden für den, äh, für den Kunden. Ich muss dazu sagen, äh, wenn wir als Firma die, die äh, Dudelsäcke von McCallum bekommen, dann bekommen wir sie nackt als Holz, weil es gibt so viele Konfigurationsmöglichkeiten, verschiedene Säcke und was weiß ich alles und wir bauen sie dann bei uns auf. Das heißt, wir bekommen die quasi als Rohlinge. Ja. So, this is the assembly department, where the finished bike pipes from the workshop will come in for a final inspection. Mm -hmm. We'll hemp them, fit the bags, if put reads in them if that's required, set them up, test them for customers, fit the bag, cover cords, everything, wrap them up and they're getting shipped all over the world. I think we're doing roughly about 80% of what we manufacture, we export all over the world. Also 80% is ungefähr export for the for the firma. Ja. We have our world map, very proud mm -hmm. of where we ship things to. Mm -hmm. I think the question is, is there any way we don't ship to? There's <laughs> very few countries, I can't think of anything. Yeah. Madagascar, I can see. Oh, we'll need to get onto that. <laughs> so here's some of the practice chanters that they do. Nice presentation, practice chanter, the full mm -hmm. alloy, everything engraved, everything's made in-house. It's got the African blackwood bottom plastic top. That's a lovely chanter actually with the, with the bowl here. Oops. Almost ruined the reed there. Yeah, nice. So I can see an old set of pipes here, Stuart. Uh, you do refurbishing we as do well? We do full refurbishments, yes. The guys okay. do refur refurbish old classic pipes. Mm -hmm. uh, we recomb them. If we need replacement parts, or if we have to glue cracks, we can do all that. We can yep. do, a, we yep. do a full service with that. Mm -hmm. And we do a full range of various different bowl pipes and things. And yet again, it's all, everything's made in-house. These are all the sort of telescopic universal blow pipes. Mm -hmm. various sizes, all now with a built-in valve, you've noticed yes, that. Yes, yes. That has yet to be publicised, I think. Also, the McCallum blowpipes sind mittlerweile mit eingebaute Ventile drin. Also, viele kennen die blowpipes, uh, wo man dann diese normale Rückschlagventil dran montieren uh, müsste. Neuerdings sind die ganze blowpipes von McCallum mit eingebaute Ventil, was sehr, sehr hilfreich ist. Austauschbar, man kann sie dann auch uh, ersetzen. Dann auch. This is us, we're, we're going to get through into this is our new workshop. We only got the, the keys for this new workshop on December, so we're still in the process of fitting it out. So the, it's the new unit, it's 5,000 square feet. And at the moment we've got storage. A lot of storage in here, we have a new dispatch office we're doing, but the idea is to fill this with more machinery. Also das ist jetzt wieder eine, eine Halle, die sie jetzt übernommen haben, neuerdings. Und äh, die haben, when did you get the keys, did you say? Dezember. Im Dezember haben sie die Schlüssel bekommen. Und jetzt fangen sie an, hier 
äh, einzurichten und die werden hier dann auch äh, Maschinen dann aufbauen, ja, dass die Produktion noch erweitert werden kann. Ich sehe ein bisschen leichter Wood hier, ist das etwas mit Mopani? Mopani, Mopani, wir benutzen das für die Breton Pipes, wir machen die French ah, Breton okay. Pipes in der Key of B. Sie sind fast wie ein, ich würde sagen, ein 7-8 Quarter Size Highland Pipes. Right. Und sie tunen sie nicht zu der Low A, sie tunen sie zu der B. Und es ist für die Breton Musik, also es ist wirklich nur für die... Das ist Mopani, die sie benutzen. Mopani, ja, ja, sie benutzen das ganze... Also das ist das Holz, die bauen auch für die bretonische äh, Dubbelsäcke und die werden in Mopane äh, gefertigt. We know the Mopane as a mount. We do, we use uh, it on the... For the bagpipes. Yeah, we use that as folk pipes, but we use it on yeah. the bagpipes, but yeah. the, the, the Bretons like this for the... So what, what, what kind of... Uh, the, the Mopane is different in what respect to the... It's an African pipe? hardwood, no, it's very, yeah. very similar. It's just very... I mean, tonally and everything, it's, it's excellent. Okay. Um, I mean, we have we had had made Highland pipes from this before, but people like to go stick with the, the darker, the darker traditional yeah. sort of. Also, it's all a a a hard as holz, then also a hard as even holz and lovely uh, timber. It's nice yeah. to work with. Yeah. Uh, nice. Aber in den schottischen Dudelsack Welt möchte man halt dunkles Holz haben. Oh, I can hear some music. We're going to go upstairs? Yes. We're going to nip upstairs. We're just going to show you where we make all the reeds. This is the MG department, MG reeds. Ah, yeah, the, this is the MG drum reeds. Can auch Enchanter uh, reeds. Enchanter reeds, small pipe reeds. Also MG heißt, what's it stand for, MG? McCallum and Grossart. McCallum Grossart. This is the Rory Grossart. Das ist seine Abteilung hier. Aber es ist ja eine, eine gemeinsame Firma. Rory ist heute nicht da, deswegen ist es auch sehr ruhig hier, aber hier werden ja die, die Reeds, äh, Drone Reeds und auch Chanter Reeds gefertigt. Wir machen all the Drone Reeds für Rory in the, in the workshop. Und mm -hmm. er assembles them und testet sie, sends sie up, ready to play. Und er macht auch die Chanter Reeds. Downstairs, so I can hear some pipes getting played. Yeah. Da spielt jemand. Hey Fred. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Fred Morrison. Fred, Fred Morrison is in the house. Hey, how, are you doing, how are we getting on? Great. So welcome to my humble abode here. This is my new room in, my, in the factory, which I'm delighted with. And you can see some of the, the pictures that we're just beginning to get going here. This is a tuning room. Isn't this it? is a tuning room for like my kind of stuff, uh, the small pipes, real pipes, Ellen pipes. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, there's a big small pipe section through there, but yeah. you know, this is the stuff that I do. I set up all the Ellen pipes, the real pipes myself. Uh, and you know, and tune them up in here. I've got a wee set of small bits, so I'll give you a blast. Ah, yeah, that'd be great. Just for your customers, these are in the key of A, which is ideal mm -hmm. for Highland Pipers. That they're so easy to blow uh, small pipes. Mm -hmm. Anybody could convert them in, you'd be up and running in 20 minutes. Small pipes are an easy pressure to handle, and they've got a full sound but very mellow, so they make it, make it really pleasurable for the, the, the converting Highland Piper. The key of A. I'll give you a wee blast of chanter on its own first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then we make sure that they're all spot on 440 so that you can mm -hmm. join in with any instrument. As you can hear, that's a mellow, but it fills the room at the same time. And with the drones, the drones are really rich and got a nice kind of chordal sound. I'll let you hear them all together here. <laughs>
is. I wish yeah. I could play them right now. Oh, you could. <laughs> <laughs> and that's just a simple tune. But the thing about the slot pipes is even a simple wee tune, it, it sings away, it sounds nice. Anybody, yeah. even non-pipers, can enjoy it. Mm -hmm. I think that's the thing. These are, in, of course, in A, and you've got a uh, A, A, that's your tenor and baritone, and then a harmony E there. That's what gives it that rich kind of chordal sound. And they're gorgeous beside your ear, and as I say, very, very easy to handle. So and you get those mouth blown as well. Mouth blown, mouth blown. Nowadays, our, our moisture control systems are so clever now, and they're so highly developed that you know it's easy to do them in, in, in mouth blown as well. But you would always recommend learning a new technique. Yeah? I, I would. I think you get a new skill under, and as I say, small pipes are not difficult to bellow. Mm -hmm. People that think, oh, what on earth? I think they'd be surprised. They'd be up and running in, ten, honestly, 10 15 minutes, and they'd think, ah, See, small pipes are an easy blow, they're easy to handle mm -hmm. and, and fun, you know, it's fun for the piper. We're all used to competitions and pressure and <laughs> all this. It's a nice break, you know, it's good for pipers. It's yeah, something yeah, you can yeah. use your tune and, 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 and play away. Yeah. Yeah. It's true, yeah. 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 Very true. Yeah. So I'll put these down. Never we'll really looked at like, like that, actually. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. I mean, you know, I do a lot of kind of workshops and that, and people love it, and they get family barbecues and neighbours that are non pipers. Actually, you see them all beginning to enjoy it and get their wee Kelly a wee tune. It's great, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, they're about, that set's about four or five day, days old, and they're singing away there, so mm -hmm. you know, they're all too well. Now, here's an interesting beast for you this is the full set of villain pipes, and of course, these are. Uh, you know, they, these are the Irish Ellen pipes, and I've got legends of uh, and centuries of tradition behind them, and they are an, a, an amazing instrument. Mm -hmm. Not nearly as difficult to play as they look. The people, what's, but you'd find out that they're actually very simple. They're actually a simple instrument to, you know, to get going with. I don't want to, you know, say the wrong thing. I don't mean that. But they're, it's 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 easy for a piper to get up and running with. That's what I would say. They're in the key of D, and they've got two full octaves, which means that you can always play in any key. And they're tailor-made uh, for playing with other instruments. A wee bit acoustically louder than the small pipe. Uh, I'll give you a blast of the chanter on its own. And uh, it's important with all... We, we, Stuart was speaking to me this morning, and he was saying, you get all the sets the same as your own set for concert level. And that's the, that, that is the truth. Mm -hmm. that, like I set up every one of these full sets, Every one of them is has to be professional level. That's what I'd be looking for if I was getting a set through the post. I'd want everything in tune. Easy Can I just play. say, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fred, you said that about when you're the uh, uh, spielen these pipes auf selber ein, na, before they zum Kunde gehen, and uh, uh, betont einfach, die müssen einfach die Qualität Standard haben, die er voraussetzen würde für sich selbst. Na. Very good. Yeah. So I'll give you a wee blast of the chanter. And you'll hear it's got a sound of its own the Ellen pipes. They say it's got the it's the instrument with the closest sound to the human voice. <laughs> So that's the chanter there, and that's a, what I would say would be a, a comfortable pressure, very easy to blow, but just enough that you want to lean in. And the pressure is really important. Mm -hmm. Again, the reason I was saying it's you know straightforward enough for people to get going is because it sits on your knee, so it's not out in mid. It sits here, so you can just get going with a scale very very easily. And before mm -hmm. you know it. show you the bottom of that set you'll see that it doubles in like a trumpet kind of effect there a trombone effect there mm -hmm. that's because of the length of it if you were to straighten it out you know it would be out to the car park so it, it's like that but that's what gives it this octave full octave d below i'll give you a, a wee a wee a wee listen to the drones on their own happens so 
sound. Really good sound. And you can see they're as steady as a rock. Mm -hmm. Like and they're taking no air, they're very air efficient, and they just flick on and they, they, they remain steady. And that's the beauty of these uh, easy drone reeds that we've got. And of course the quality. So they have any easy drone reeds in there. Easy drone reeds, small easy yeah. drone reeds are set up here. And they're set up for every customer. So mm -hmm. they don't need to tweak. Mm -hmm. And they'll stay like that. Honestly, for years to come, if they're not touched with, yeah. and the pressures are all adjusted. Mm -hmm. that, easy, no, no air pressure. Anybody can play that. Anybody could do that there. I mean, <laughs> even I could do that. <laughs> <laughs> Good one, doll. Right, I'll let you hear the Chandra drones together, and then I'll let you hear these. These are the regulators, mm -hmm. and you'll hear them coming in. They're, they sound amazing. They, they give you chords that you can play enhance slow airs with or you can play rhythmic off beats and things on, on, on quicker tunes but I'll blast the drones and chanter on let you hear it all together and then let you hear the regs <laughs> wanted to develop to get as really as good as we could for, for customers so that it was as hassle free as possible. Right, regs. <laughs> Practice set. Practice set, which um, all a practice set is, you would take just take that uh, out, and there's a plug that we right. we've we've talked about, Donald, yeah. which screws in there. It's very it looks very aesthetically nice, mm -hmm. and that would be your practice set. And you practice on the channel. You would practice on the channel. Yeah. Get your scale going. Mm -hmm. If you wanted to add drones only, you just take the plug out and fit in the stock. And of course, if you wanted to fit the whole thing, that, that can go in just like So that. the next step would be the half set without the regulators? Yeah, if you choose to. Okay. Many people like to go straight to the full set. I did that, and okay. uh, I think a lot of pipers, if, with, the, with the practice set, we get it a lot. They'll, they'll just, I'll just say this, this, yeah. is a, this is an important thing, that they'll get the practice set, but a lot of them very quickly say to me, can I get the drones, mm -hmm. you know? And then, of course, the ones that are developed and know they can handle drones, they always come back for the regs. And the regs... Uh, they're more difficult to fit in retrospect, or...? Uh, the, the only bit that we would need to send... All you'd need to do is take your stock out. Yeah. Take the, take the drones out and send us the stock. The only bit we have to fit is that, this okay. part here. Okay. The rest of them, they, they just... We, we fit the half sets with wee plugs that you just flick out and the regs fit in. And ich wollte euch einfach mal, weil wir, wir bieten die äh, Ullen Pipes jetzt an und wir haben jetzt so die erste Erfahrungen damit. Und zwar äh, habe ich jetzt Fred gerade gefragt, also man fängt in der Regel an dem Practice Set, hat er ja gezeigt, dann gibt es ein Half Set und ein Full Set. Und der Half Set ist ja mit den Drones und ein Full Set ist mit den Regulators. Also man kann ja die Drones nachkaufen, aber Fred sagt, die meisten, die dann ein Practice Set holen, merken gleich, hätte ich dann doch eine, eine Full Set oder Half Set geholt. Ich habe gerade Fred gefragt, also wenn man den Half Set holt, also die Drones ohne Regulators, dann muss man die Regulators nachbauen. Also das heißt, so, so you have to send the Half Set in, to have them... Not the Half Set, all we need, all you need to do is take that out, yeah. take the drones out and just send us your stock. Oh, the stock the only. The stock only. Okay, so that's, that's... And we would fit this 
and, and read them up perfectly so okay. that they were ready for you to play and we would fit these, it's no problem. All yeah. you need to do is just send the stock. So, so Fred's Empfehlung is gleich ein full set kaufen. So you're going to uh, just buy a full set and then... Well, the full set, I have to say, <laughs> yeah. you know, I, I'll say this. Like when I was learning, which was back in the kind of mid, late 90s, I remember thinking, well, I go for the half set. And this guy said, just go for the full set. And I said, what do you do about the regs? This was an old Irish legend, Dylan Piper. And he said to me, just get the lot going and get bashing away on them. And <laughs> do you know something? It was the best thing I ever did because mm -hmm. I was playing them in a week or two. Mm -hmm. And it works. The package works out more economically for people. They're getting, you know, the, key, the whole thing sets up. It's, a, it's more economical. But... The choice is there for people. Yeah. If people yeah. just say, I just want to play a practice, just want to have set, of course. Well, it's, it's, the choice is there. it's an investment as well. These things, you know, they're not going to devalue. Not now, at all. Because uh, the waiting list is quite long. So, because uh, you would, you, you could probably say that, Stuart, to build one of these is. Yeah. It's, it's a lot an engineering, of work. Uh, engineering masterpiece, the whole yeah. thing. It's yeah. taken yeah. a lot, a lot, a lot of work. Yeah. It takes yeah. 10 years, to be honest, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. I mean, that's a beautiful look. That's a really, like, the way they're tuned and playing yeah. is like, the, I mean, to me, is the highest. I've played oh, it sounds, That's yeah. about as high quality a set as you ever. On it. I, I'm not just saying that. Yeah. Like, every, that's 440, every note and two octaves, every key, every regulator. Drone, air efficient drones that don't move. It's, it's, it's like an extremely high quality, beautiful looking set. And for the price you get them, honestly, it's, it's an amazing, it's a great Well, great talking deal. about uh, air pipes, uh, We'll be doing a workshop next year. Yeah. We'll so go. if you're interested in learning yeah. pipes, then uh, let Andreas know. Andreas can forward the information to us because we'll probably uh, get a date uh, set for next year yeah. and have Fred over do a workshop for those interested in Ellen pipes. And uh, best order your Ellen pipes now because believe me, the, the, the waiting time is there for yeah. a set like this. And uh, and we'll be back in touch with a date for the for the thing and a recital in the evening. Yeah, yeah concert so. in the evening. Yeah. yeah, I mean we could even combine a day with small pipe small workshop, pipes, yeah. you know, and yeah. that kind of thing. But you know, on the wait list, I think we're like something like six months at the minute. Mm -hmm. By Ireland standards, oh, that's uh, incredible. Yeah. You know, yeah. six years might be more like it was something like, yeah. or longer. Yeah. But six yeah. months for a full set like that, it was good going. Yeah. Good going. Excellent. Thanks, Ray. Great, guys. Great. 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 No problem. Thank you. Thanks again. And see you soon. See you soon, pal. <laughs> Cheers. So I think that sums it up. Yeah, it concludes the, yeah. the tour. That's why the tour from uh, from the Camel Bagpipes. It was super, that's the Fred and how it uh, here is. Also, da habe ich mich auch besonders gut gefreut, weil wir uns gerade ausgetauscht haben, gerade noch gestern. Wunderbar. Also ich bedanke mich bei Stuart. Thanks very much, Stuart. Very well. And Kenny, der ist ja noch hinten, aber wir sehen ihn gleich. Und äh, ja, wir sehen uns gleich. Wir werden dann Gruppe Senior in a minute for questions and answers, Fragen und Antworten. So, da bin ich wieder. Das war ja wirklich eine, eine tolle Führung durch das Werk, durch die Betriebsstätten. Total interessant. Also ich fand es beeindruckend, viele Informationen, die wir jetzt erstmal bearbeiten müssen. Und äh, wir machen in Zukunft mit der Dudelsack-Schule noch weitere Events. Es kommen ganz tolle Sachen in den nächsten Jahren, die wir jetzt natürlich noch nicht verraten. Aber schaut doch ab und zu mal vorbei bei www.dudelsackschule.de und da findet ihr auf unserem schwarzen Brett die neuesten Veranstaltungen, Online-Workshops und ja, ganz tolle äh, Events und Sachen, die wir für euch veranstalten. Also vielen Dank für eure Teilnahme heute und empfehlt uns gerne weiter und dann bis bald. Ciao!